Good morning. I'm just frothing up some milk here, putting a little vanilla syrup in it. Vanilla skinny syrup. Okay, so I'll get this going and then I'll get my vanilla custard pie coffee going. This morning, I had a great morning. Let me tell you about it. So I was out walking Grayson and I've mentioned to you before uh, Russell and the feral chicken. Russell, oh, good morning, Kevin. Hey, hey, if y'all are watching, I see there's other people watching. Your names are not coming up. They may not come up unless you say something. So let me know who you are, where you're watching from. Okay, and what you're drinking. So, all right, come on, coffee. Here we go. <clears throat> so I have this neighbor named Russell. And he has a lot of very beautiful plantings around his apartment. He spends a lot of time um, on his front and backyard making them really, really pretty. Well, one day, this chicken shows up. Now, you gotta understand, I live in an apartment complex. There's like, I think, 288 apartments. Um, and they're all two-story buildings. So how many buildings is that? I don't know, um, let me think. Maybe, I don't know, 40 buildings or something like that, I don't know. Um, 36 buildings, anyway, I cannot do the math in my head that quickly. Um, oh, okay, hey, the milk, let me turn this around, okay. This is done, it's blinking, okay. Let me just show you this. I'll, and I, I will remember what I'm talking about because this is special. Okay, so there's the foamed up milk. The coffee should be done. Oh, it's done. Okay. Now, let me just pour the foam into my coffee. Okay, coffee. Oh, vanilla flavored foam. It's, it's sort of like a very light whipped cream. Okay, let me get the spoon and get the rest of it out. Okay, hopefully I will do this without knocking anything over. Okay, then, and I will finish telling you the story because I actually uh, realized something from it. Okay. Wait, let me, I think the sun. Okay, hang on, hang on. There we go. Oh yes. Isn't that fun? Okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, so the story. Let me just taste this. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, rainbow. Drinking that coffee through that sweet vanilla foam is so good. All right. So one day, uh, Russell starts noticing that some of his plantings are like scratched up and torn up and there's um, scratch marks and stuff. And anyway, eventually after watching, he discovers there's this chicken. Now, my apartment complex is right by a big mall, several shopping centers. There may, you know, it's an area, it's, it's not urban, it's not suburban, it's not rural. You know, there can still be places where people might have small farms dotted in here and there, or they may have private homes and, you know, they could have animals. 
um, the zoning, I mean, obviously in the apartment complex, we can't have things like chickens, but uh, except for feral chickens, this is a wild chicken. Anyway, so I'm trying, what I'm trying to get across to you is that this is not the kind of place that you're going to ever expect to see anything other than a cat or a dog, okay, outdoors. So um, Russell starts trying to catch the chicken because it's messing up his garden. And he starts putting out food and he's tried to catch it. He starts building little traps and, you know, they started small and they've gotten bigger and more complex. Anyway, I have never, I had never seen this chicken. And he's always telling me about it and I'm always asking him about it because I think it's a riot. And apparently, um, you know, we have little wooded areas in our apartment complex. So when it uh, starts to get near sundown, the chicken will go into the woods and roost up in a tree. And what Russell told me is they stay very still um, because they can't see at night. And if they stay absolutely still, then predators can't find them, or at least the kind we have around here. And he said that it's a big enough chicken anyway that probably a cat could not kill it. Maybe an owl could. Anyhow, so, you know, I've like week after week after week after week, I every time um, Grayson and I walk by, and we walk by, oh my gosh, several times a day. And I always make a point of walking by to try to see places that the chicken has been sighted. And especially by Russell's area where he's got the trap built. You know, I've seen squirrels, I've seen all kinds of birds, never a chicken. And um, one of the, uh, my neighbors, um, he took a picture one day, the chicken was across the road, but you know, it just kind of looked like a pale blob on the <laughs> landscape. I mean, didn't, you know, you couldn't tell it was a chicken. Um, anyway, so this morning, Grayson and I are out walking and I hear Russell sort of, you know, making chicken calling noises, you know, kind of like beep, beep, but in a lower voice. I guess more appealing to a chicken um, and more suitable for a man to make than, than my higher voice. Anyhow, so I thought, oh my gosh, maybe the chicken is there. And Grayson and I go around and we stood in the road and we looked back along the side of the building to where Russell had the chicken trap. Sure enough, there comes the chicken. Oh my gosh, beautiful chicken, just beautiful. I wish I could have gotten closer to it, but you know how dogs are. Like, I didn't want to suddenly have a Grayson have some like ancient instinctual thing come up where he rushes at the chicken and kills it or something, dragging me along behind. So anyway, I got to, Grayson and I got to stand there for a while and just watch this chicken and Russell was, and the chicken were talking to each other. It was so funny because the chicken like answered him <laughs> whenever he made that sound at it. Anyhow, so this is, you know, besides the, I said to Russell when I saw him, I said, now I can die happy <laughs> because, you know, and he said, you probably thought I've been making this up the whole time because, you know, so many people have seen the chicken. I've never seen the chicken, even though I've been diligently looking for it several times a day at all hours. Anyhow, so there's a point in all this, okay? When I saw that chicken, it was, you know, like, a, I would say a medium-sized chicken. Because I've we kept chickens one time before. We just had maybe half a dozen chickens. And one of them was ew, rather large. And, you know, so I was thinking in terms of, Russell was saying it's been eating so well. It's a really big chicken. Well, it was a plump chicken, but um, in my mind, 
all these weeks because I've been thinking about it, but had never actually seen it. I'm imagining, honestly, I'm imagining this like three foot tall chicken that maybe comes up to, you know, my hips or my waist or something. I mean, I, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But what I realized in thinking about this is that very often when we're thinking and wondering about something and we don't know and we, we don't actually have any more evidence to help us form an opinion, sometimes something can become a bigger deal in our minds than it actually is. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had this happen? Like maybe you've had a disagreement with someone or a problem with someone and um, you imagine when you're finally going to get to talk to them. And, you know, at first you start off and you're thinking, you know, real reasonably, um, you know, can we talk about something that's, it's been a problem for me, you know, and then eventually after maybe weeks and you haven't talked yet and you're imagining scenarios and you're imagining them being defensive and you're imagining, you know, having to say just it can become really difficult, you know, and become this big deal, become a, um, what do they call it, a tempest in a teapot. <laughs> you know, it just becomes blown all out of proportion. Kind of like my thinking about that chicken and thinking and thinking, but not seeing it and hearing about it, but never seeing it and imagining that it's so huge. I mean, look, okay, so I'm imagining this chicken going from being maybe, you know, chicken size to eventually maybe coming up to here on me. Right, let me move back. Oops. Okay. Now, there's no chicken that's that big. But in my mind, feral chicken was that big because I had not seen it yet. Anyway, so it just, you know, it gives me, oh my gosh, I'm using a metal spoon and the double walled glass. Ah, mm -mm. Can't do that because the inside's very thin glass. I don't want to bust something because I, I did that with one other one. Oh, anyway, so, yeah, I wanted to tell you about finally saw Russell's feral chicken, F-E-R-A-L, wild, and um, that lives in my apartment complex, and um, a little lesson that I learned from it. <laughs> so, anyway, oh, good morning, Carrie, and anybody else who's watching, let me know where you're watching from and what you're drinking. And if you can relate it all to anything that I shared here, God bless you.